what's happening guys John the realtor here for part 10 on this uh, series that we're doing which is on the RPA um, this last video we talked about pages um, six and seven and I think I'm gonna do two to three pages depending on the video because again this is more for you guys to read um, and more to review but I, I want to hit some of the hot points here um, on this page here we're gonna talk about uh, le so lead disclosures I'm not gonna talk about because it's very rare when you find a home that still has lead-based paint in it, but I will talk about the home fire and defensible space, so very important. So the state of California now, uh, if your, your home that you're selling is within a high fire zone, uh, it may require defensible space inspection. So what is that? What is a defensible space inspection? So home fire hardening disclosure, for any transaction where the TDS is required, your total disclosure statement, uh, total disclosure statement property is located in a high or very high fire hazard severity zone and the home was constructed before January 1st 2010 the seller shall within the time specified deliver to the buyer a home hardening disclosure re required by law and a statement of features of which the seller is aware that may make the home value uh, vulnerable excuse me not valuable to wildfire and flying uh, embers and uh, the final inspection report uh, regarding compliance with defensible space requirements if one was prepared pursuant to government. Um, defensible space disclosure and addendum, let me read that real quick. For any transaction in which TDS is required and the property is located in a high or very high uh, uh, fire hazard severity zone, sell seller shall within specified time deliver to the buyer a disclosure with the property. Uh, the property is in compliance with any applicable, applicable defensible space laws designed to protect a space law. So basically what it means, guys, is I had a property in L.A. County. Just to give you guys an example, I was in the city of West Covina, and uh, it was uh, in a high fire zone because it was up in the mountains um, in a really nice area of um, Covina there. So basically what happens is you, you have to get an inspection from the fire department they have someone specifically designated to come out to the property and inspect the surroundings of the property to check to make sure that the um that there, it's there's no fire danger in other words if you have brush bushes trees plants that kind of thing they all have to be a specific distance away from the home from the structure itself if they're not or if they're overgrown then you may be required or your seller may be required to um uh, abate those plants clean up right so that's all required there's a specific website out there that you can search the address of the property and you can see if it's if it's part of that um, zone and if it is and it will require that so I really really encourage you guys as agents if you see a property um, and you, you don't know like if it's close to the mountains or or that kind of thing I would check please check in the very beginning of your transaction because this can take weeks to take care of. Um, we got really lucky because we got the, the phone number to the inspector himself. So we were able to schedule it, but I really encourage you guys to, to please do it at the very beginning of your transaction because if you don't check or you don't have your TC check or whatever, you're gonna, you're gonna be in a nightmare um, uh, on, on your transaction, okay? Because now you're affecting the seller, you're affecting the buyer, you're affecting everybody and yourself. Um, so liability is huge on this. So make sure you please do this and have your addendums there. So um, so that's it, guys. That's, that's that part of it there. If you have any questions on that, again, comment below and, and, I, will, uh, and I will definitely help you guys out on that, okay? Um, so termination rights, uh, withholding taxes, you guys should probably read that. Megan's Law database, we, we all know what Megan's Law is. Um, that's still gonna be in there uh, you know, for buyers to, to, to be able to visit the website and um, track that themselves. And then notice regarding gas and hazardous liquid uh, transmission pipelines, that's in there. Community uh, condominium plan development, um, so that's all in there as well. This kind of goes over all of your disclosures, natural hazard, natural and environmental hazards. So um, the, the earthquake guide, that's all still there. The NHD is still there. Your NH, NHD is very important because your NHD will also give you, um, like it says here, it says high fire, you know, very high fire hazard zone, state fire responsibility area, earthquake fault line, seismic has, um, hazard zone, and disclosure of any other zone as required by law 
and provide any other information required for uh, those zones. So NHD is very important. So when you guys get that back in the beginning of your transaction, again, uh, I uh, cannot stress enough to check for those fire zones and all of that as well, okay? Because a part of that in your prelim is to review it and then talk to your buyer about it. And that's part of that investigation period and those contingencies. So could you guys imagine being through the pandemic, you buy a house, buyer's like, I don't want to have any contingencies, I just want the house. And then they find out that they're in a really high fire hazard zone and their homeowner's insurance is really expensive and they bought the house and then maybe they're also in a flood zone and they had no idea. So now who, who does that sit against, right? So who's affected by that? I'm not an attorney and I will not give legal advice, but I will tell you that as an agent, it is our responsibility to protect our client's best interest. In this case, because we're talking about the RPA, it is the buyer's best interest, right? So um, do the job, guys. We're professionals, so do the job and, and, and you know make the money worth it and then keep your license, all right? So that's important. Um, buyer's investigation of property and matters affecting the property. So this is also important. Um, you want to read through this again, lead based paint, wood destroying pests, organisms, structural pest control, that kind of thing. That's all in there as well. Um, title investing is super important. So, uh, how is the, how is the property going to be held in title? Um, is it an individual buying it? Is it a, um, you know, is it a married couple holding it, you know, holding title, you know, that sort of thing. So. Um, let's see, that was page nine. Page uh, 10 talks about time periods, removal of contingencies. So again, this is buyer review. So B, section B here. So actually seller delivery of documents. The seller shall actually within the time specified in the paragraph. So up on top, you can specify that you want three days, five days, you give the seller 10 days, whatever it is to get you the documents. But once the buyer has the documents, the, the buyer review of documents, request for repair contingency, contingency removal or cancellation buyer has the time specified perform the investigations and remove so all of this is part of those that table of contents of the buyers physical contingencies and everything as well so this talks about removing it um, and the sellers right to cancel so this is really important so the seller typically cannot cancel a transaction just because so the seller can't say forget this buyer I'm gonna cancel and I'm gonna move on right so um, if the time specified, so if you notice um, section C1 says, if the time specified in this agreement, the buyer does not deliver to the seller a removal of the applicable contingency or cancellation of this agreement, then seller, after first delivering to a buyer a notice of buyer to perform, and I'll explain that, may cancel this agreement in such event. The seller shall authorize the return of the buyer's deposit except fees incurred by the buyer. So you guys see that like there are specific things that will happen that the seller can cancel the, the, the transaction, but there, there are steps that the seller needs to take. So if you don't remove your contingency, okay, the seller can submit a notice of buyer to perform. You have 48 hours from the submittal of that or from the execution of that document and delivery. You have two days to fulfill that performance um, item. If it is not fulfilled in that time, the seller can then send you a cancellation of contract. Like this is, this is serious stuff, right? So the seller right to cancel buyer contract obligation, seller after first delivering to buyer a notice of buyer to perform may cancel this agreement if by the time specified in this agreement, buyer does not take the following actions. Deposit funds as required, that's number one. If the funds deposited uh, pursuant to paragraph 3D are not in good, not good when deposited, number two, um, deliver updated contact information to buyer's lender as required by paragraph 5C, number three, um, deliver a notice of FHA or VA costs or terms, if any, as specified by paragraph 5C4, that's four. Deliver verification or satisfactory verification if the seller is reasonably disapproves of the verification already provided as require, required Excuse me, by paragraph 5B, so that's five. Um, deliver of a letter required by paragraph 6B. In writing, uh, assume or accept leases or liens specified. So there are several things here, guys, that the seller can cancel on, right? Now also, seller right to cancel seller contingencies. Seller may cancel this agreement by good faith exercise of any seller contingency, including in this agreement or otherwise agreed so long as that the contingency has not already been removed and waived in writing. Okay. 
All right, now buyer's right to cancel, buyer's right to cancel seller contingencies. So if by the time specified in this agreement, seller does not deliver to the buyer removal of applicable contingencies or cancellation of this agreement, then the buyer, after first delivering a seller notice to perform, so you notice there is a seller notice to perform as well, okay? Um, the buyer and, and expenses already paid by the escrow holder. So may cancel this agreement. So you see that the buyer, it also talks about uh, buyer, um, you know, cancellation as well. Uh, buyer's right to cancel uh, seller contract obligation. So if the seller doesn't, um, you know, fulfill their obligation, they can cancel as well. Uh, buyer right to cancel buyer contingency. So this one's really important. So I'm gonna save this one for the next video because it does talk about um, some of that because we're already 10 minutes in. So guys, again, 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 I thank you so much for attending the videos. It's super important to me that all of you learn. And again, I, as I talk about, and even in the last video, um, buyers, if you're out there purchasing a home and you, you know, you're interested in the contract and you want to know, or if you're interested in real estate overall and you want to get your license, then please, um, you know, uh, stick around for the videos. I know this says, uh, this is a lot of information, but, um, hope it helps again. Don't forget to like the video. I appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe for more videos and other fun stuff coming up for now. I hope you guys stay productive and we will talk soon.